Hey YouTube, Wes here checking in with a brand new episode of The Vinyl Survivor. This is episode number 173. Hope you're all doing well, having a great day. Um, if you're new here, welcome. If you're a longtime member, welcome. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this episode. As always, The Vinyl Survivor Show is the sort of final reckoning of albums I've picked up in the past. I give them a good critical listen and let you know whether they're going to be staying in my permanent collection or whether they just weren't for me and they're going to be going away. So let's go ahead and get into it. First album I have here, uh, I believe from around 1980, is... Uh, I believe this is a compilation by Klaus Schultz titled Mind Phaser on the Brain label. Klaus Schultz uh, from Tangerine Dream, very ambient electronic artist, really, really cool stuff. You can definitely see it on the back there. Um, yeah, really, really enjoyable uh, uh, sort of late 70s early 80s electronic music here uh, definitely was cool find that's on the brain german brain label on the black label uh, so yeah klaus schultz mind phaser definitely dug it again ambient electronic stuff and uh, definitely a keeper for my collection all right next thing i have to share with you is sort of an oddity it's a vinyl pressing of a soundtrack to a podcast which is kind of a weird thing to say uh, but this is the music from the podcast serial great podcast that i really enjoyed uh listening to in the sort of the you know it's from 2015 so around that time uh, sort of the early 20 teens period uh yeah just have this for sort of I guess nostalgic but it's it's good sort of electronic soundtracky kind of stuff um, you know, if you've ever heard the the podcast serial you'll definitely recognize this music and this sort of goes deeper and, and gives you some more longer pieces that are sort of on based on that theme theme title track or you know theme to the to the podcast itself and just a very basic black pressing here uh, but pressed at 45 or cut at 45 rpm so yeah music from serial definitely dug it and it's going to be staying in my collection all right next up i got a piano piano live performance here i guess you could say uh, lauren hollander at the fillmore east from 1969 there's the gatefold uh, playing the electronic concert grand and yeah kind of doing some kind of uh, more upbeat performances of classical uh, piano uh, Prokofiev, uh, Bach, Debussy, uh, Hollander classical pieces here yeah you know, it was an enjoyable listen not necessarily something I, I need to keep not necessarily something I sort of collect and uh, yeah, just, just a nice listen, but unfortunately not going to be staying in the collection. That's on the Angel Records. All right, next up, I got an art pop record by Midge Year from 1988. This is titled uh, Answers to Nothing. Yeah, really good album. Uh, I'm still kind of new to Midge Year. Uh, but yeah, I definitely dug this one. Very good sort of art pop 80s kind of stuff. Uh, not too much to look at on the cover there. Uh, this is a gold stamp promo copy. Again, <laughs> pretty plain on the inner sleeve here. Got some lyrics on it as well. And it's on the black plain sort of, I guess this is kind of a custom label, very simplistic, very, you know, kind of matches the album art itself uh, on Chrysalis. Oh yeah, mid-year answers to nothing. Really cool, dug it, and it's gonna be staying in my collection. All right, next up we have uh, Orpheus Ascending. I guess this is our self-titled album. Yeah, kind of a 60s psych kind of thing. Yeah, I kind of struggled with this one. I just found it wasn't psychedelic enough for me, I guess is the best way to explain how I felt about it. I just didn't really get into this one at all. Uh, so unfortunately, this one's not a keeper for me. Does come with this inner sleeve that we've seen on some other things. And it's on the MGM Gold and Teal label. 
Yeah, Orpheus Ascending, unfortunately, just couldn't get into it, so this one is not going to be a keeper for me. I'll pass this one on. All right, next up, moving into the 2000s. This is from 2016. This is the, I believe it was the, was his debut album, debut solo album uh, by Nick Jonas. Last year was complicated. Uh, really good, really good sort of modern pop album by Nick Jonas. Definitely enjoyed listening to this. There's the gatefold. And you do get some more photos and lyrics on the insert there. I believe this is on clear vinyl. Yeah, it's on clear vinyl. Yeah, clear vinyl pressing. Island Records. Oh, so yeah, Nick Jonas last year was complicated. I, I dug this one and, and I enjoyed listening to it. And it's going to be staying in my permanent collection. All right, next thing I have to share with you, moving back to, geez, it's either late 60s, 72, okay. Uh, the self-titled solo album by Peter Yarrow of Peter, Paul, and Mary. Uh, yeah, each, each artist, each of, the, each of the group, each member of the group did their own sort of solo release that had the same look to it, just different colors. Uh, and this is Peter Yarrow's really good stuff. I, I definitely enjoy him as a solo artist. I've talked about some solo uh, releases from him in the past. A really good artist, really varied in his styles and uh, yeah, really good artist and uh, definitely enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this album from him. Lots of great folksy stuff, some more rock and roll kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, good solid, solid solo release from him. This is on the green Warner Brothers label. So Peter Yarrow's Peter yeah, gets a thumbs up for me and it's staying in my collection. All right, next up we got a uh, jazz album on ECM by Mike Knock. This is titled Ondas from 1982. Uh, so just nice ECM piano jazz kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, really pleasant, really enjoyable to listen to. Uh, it also features Eddie Gomez on bass and John Christensen on drums. Um, so yeah, really, really good, really good jazz here. Great ECM green label. Mike Knock with Ondas definitely uh, gets the thumbs up for me and nice uh, ECM piano jazz kind of stuff. And I'm going to be keeping this one in the collection. All right, next up, got a bit of hip hop from 2013. This is Matangi by the hip hop artist Mia, M-I-A. Really good album from hers. Very, very hardcore album from her. Uh, definitely dug this one quite a bit. Had it on CD when it, since when it came out and found this for a really good price a few years later. So I was glad to be able to pick this up on vinyl. Really nice release from her. Custom labels. Yeah, so it's Mia's Matangi. Again, hardcore female hip hop stuff. Uh, yeah, I definitely dig her as an artist and I'm, I'm glad to uh, say this one's going in my permanent collection. Okay, and last but not least, to have a box set here. This is a really cool one, a really special one. I was glad to be able to pick this one up. This is a uh, Woody Guthrie's The Library of Congress Recordings done by Alan Lomax. Really nice box set here. Uh, lots of songs, lots of storytelling. He talks a lot about the history of the songs and, and stuff like that. So it's a really, a really solid uh, collection here of stuff uh, uh, by Woody Guthrie. Really definitely sort of a de definitive collection, I would say. If you, know, if you get one thing by Woody Guthrie, this would be it, I would say. Yeah, just just you know the the storytelling, the songs, the recordings, uh, really really nicely done. Three LP set on the gold Electra label, and then you do also get a nice um, booklet as well with some photographs and some more liner notes and essays and all kinds of cool stuff. So. Uh, yeah, definitely a very definitive collection of Woody Guthrie, a great way to close out this episode of The Vinyl Survivor. So thank you for watching. Hope you're all having a great day, great night. Remember, there is no bad music, only music you don't like. We'll see you next time. Cheers.